Central School is a great learning environment for students in 5th and 6th grade. It was located next to where the Fox and Illinois Rivers meet in the center of town. At September 12, 2008, floodwaters rose and Central School was the victim. Before Central flooded, it was just a normal elementary school. One class, however, made something extraordinary come true. Mrs. Rolandos. A teacher who says students have enough challenges in their lives. The classroom shouldn't be one of them. All right, everybody, do you remember your job? It's their favorite part of the day. As soon as we get one tablecloth on, then we can get out our ingredients and lay them down. Time to bake cookies with Mrs. Rolando. All the students love Mrs. Yeah. Rolando. But before they can make their masterpieces, these students must first transform the school's art room into a kitchen. I would love to, to be able to have, to have this kitchen and let the kids just be able to start in and work on the independent living skills that they're going to need every day. These students struggle with a range of physical and mental handicaps. Unfortunately, this room presents more challenges. Sometimes it gets really, really chaotic. There are so many things that we need to do. Everything is dirty. Everything needs to be moved. Oh, don't touch that. Before they can learn, they have to remove and be aware of all the dangers. That will get very hot and that will burn you. They have to maneuver around a hot kiln, not to mention all these distractions. We have to leave them, all right? I'll just push the tables back that way. There's a lot of neat, fun things to get into yeah. and a lot of paint to spill and yeah. a lot of clay to play with, huh? Sure, the room fits its purpose, but this teacher wants more for her kids. I don't really have enough room to put him here, so maybe we'll switch with that group and we'll put him right over here. It's a personal thing because it means everything to me to let these kids be able to do the very best that they can do. That's why she's designed a dream kitchen in the classroom. She put her prize-winning money from WQAD and Oprah's Big Give toward the project. She's worked to get thousands of dollars in donations from area businesses. New design, most importantly, will be handicap accessible. Students like Trevor won't have to struggle. Hold this like your life depends on it. Promise, like magic, touch that switch. Hey making it easier to focus on the lesson. And this is much more than a cooking class. It would, it would break that spoon. It's problem solving. Which one is sugar? Good. Reading and math. One, half. Everyday living skills. I mean, let's open the door and check for what? Cats. We always say check for cats, because that's just silly enough for us to remember. A dash of fun. I like to lick this thing. <laughs> Are you supposed to do that, no. no, no. And most importantly, safety. Okay, but why can't I just plug it in with the wet hand? I could get shocked, right? That's it's a long journey towards independence, but with Mrs. Rolando in their corner, they're one step closer. To make this kind of an impact, I just can't tell you what it means to me. Okay, Megan, I want you to stand up because it's your time to shine, baby. There's so many things that are, that are going to hold them back in their life. But if I can just get one step forward for them that they can do on their own, it'll, it'll make everything worth it. And Mr. Mrs. Rolando needs $35,000 to complete the project. She's well on her way. Mrs. Rolando did not win the grand prize. However, the community rallied behind her to raise enough funds for her handicapped accessible kitchen. The day we got out of school in June, we started working, and we worked until the day before school started. So three months to actually build it after we raised the money and made all of our connections. The outlook for the school year looked promising. Then the unexpected happened. And then the flood happened on September 12th, and it was, it was just terrible because you could see the water coming up in, in the predictions. We knew where the water was going to be in the, it was going to be in the building and along the sides. But until you actually go through it, it's very difficult to, to imagine. As the river started to rise, the community once again rallied behind Central School, sandbagging to try and keep the water out of the building. Personally, I've been down there sandbagging the last two floods. Uh, the last time we sandbagged, they, the sandbags are still remaining there. So personally, uh, I've offered a whole lot of my time. I know. Um, my son Matt and his Boy Scout troop came down and helped donate their time in sandbagging. So personally, we have a lot invested in this. And we didn't do it solely because my daughter went to school there. We, we did it because the school and people were in need. Despite the efforts from the community, some water still made it into the school. After the damages happened, we had an assessment on, on everything and all the issues concerning that. 
it took a while to understand that, to wrap your mind around it. After days of waiting for the water to recede and the team to access the damage, they declared Central unsafe, leaving the staff and students without a home. When we first um, had to leave Central because of the water, we were refugees, we were homeless, and we were taken in by the folks at McKinley and Lincoln and Shepherd. And you were there temporarily, um, knowing that we would come up with another solution. Many people's feelings were hurt, destroyed, and crushed. Mrs. Rolando worked extremely hard for her and her students to have something special for themselves. Her kitchen, completed just weeks earlier, was washed away. Mrs. Rolando, what was your first reaction? I cried. I cried. We worked really, really hard. A lot of people in the community, um, I felt a big loss, and I was, I was sad for me and for the people who had helped us. How did your students respond? They were really sad. It took a little bit for them to understand that we would never go back because we kept thinking, well, we will, we will, we will, and then they were just very sad because it was like I gave them a gift and then a couple of weeks later I took it away again. Um, I think when they said, well, we're not going to go back to Central, that has been very hard for people because many teachers have taught there for their entire teaching career. Um, that building's at least 50 years old. It's a place in the community where we do lots of things. Besides school, we do community events. And so if we're not able to go back, you know, because of whatever the decisions are, that's going to be a pretty emotional hole, not just for my students and staff, but for the community as a whole. Over 400 students and 40 staff members from Central were relocated to three other buildings in the district. So it has been difficult on everyone involved. Our students have done a wonderful job as far as being able to transition through the difficult times. Our staff has been wonderful. And it didn't only affect our Central staff, it's affected our entire staff in the whole school district. At one time, our students were at Lincoln School and they were at McKinley School and they're also at Shepherd School, so the staffs have been dealing really well with it, and everyone has been patient and understanding during this. The students and staff were separated, not knowing where to go in need of a place to stay, a place to teach something, anything, to feel okay and know where they are. The uncertainty, the not knowing, some teachers have had to move several times since the flood. Um, they may be started, uh, one teacher started in the planetarium, then she moved to the library and then to a trailer. I've only had to move a couple of times. Uh, some of our teachers actually started out teaching four teachers in a gymnasium, four classes in a gymnasium. Welcome to Shepherd. We tried to keep our own schedule, pretty similar to what we had when we were at Central but it didn't work. The schedule, we had to just do some tweaking, I would call it, not real major changes. We had to allow for extra kids at lunch. So when they first came, we had to do kind of a quick fix mm -hmm. to get make sure everybody got through and got time to eat. And then when we went, once we had time to kind of get everything absorbed, then we made some more um, standardized schedule changes with the lunch hours so that everybody ate during the three lunch hours that we have. The bell system. Um, your bells were different times than our bells, and kids were in the hall, we were interrupting your classes, you guys were loud, you know, just making loud, regular hall noise when we were in class. Uh, also, our students and teachers share classrooms with some of your students and teachers, and it just worked out better, so we've adopted the Shepherd schedule to make it go smoother. 